everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for orientation. I know that Mr. Williams had said before, but if you didn't receive, there's um, pamphlets outside for activities. There's more program of studies. The program of studies, your, your children should have got them yesterday, meeting when they met with their counselor, but if you didn't, feel free to grab another one of those. With us tonight, we have Mr. Williams, which will be the freshman assistant principal next year. Not with us tonight is Mr. Adam. He's the building principal. Other assistant principals are Mrs. Sincata, Mrs. Lopez, and then I'm Melanie Fomeyer. I'm the new supervisor of guidance. Supervisors are here with us tonight. Over there we have Mrs. Panasowicz. We have Dr. Dillon. Mrs. Rosen. Mrs. Fisher. And Dr. Barry Axa. I would like to introduce Mrs. Cash. She's going to talk a little bit about the Freshman Academy. Hi, good evening. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ms. Katz. I am the Freshman Academy leader. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about that. I'm also one of the Spanish teachers here at the high school, and I run the uh, club Students Helping Honduras, where we raise money uh, to build schools in Honduras. So a little bit about the Freshman Academy. It's one of the... Um, opportunities that the rising ninth graders have to kind of get connected to the school in a number of ways, um, including academics. And as a transition from coming from eighth grade into the high school, it can be very challenging. So as a freshman academy leader, what I do is I work with all of the freshman teachers, as well as the administration and the guidance department, to identify students that may be having a difficulty, that may be struggling, um, students that we want to recognize as doing really well for student of the month type honors and things like that. Um, we help the students uh, to be aware of what their options are if they need to seek out extra help. So we have things like um, different programs after school. We have homework center and destinations. We have Cardinal Nest, which is run by the National Honor Society, where students have the opportunity to get tutored by their peers. Another um, important aspect of the Freshman Academy is this year we've been focusing on our school goal, which is literacy development. So we've been really pushing the students at all levels to improve their literacy in a number of ways um, between reading comprehension and writing. And we actually, can I, can I mention the Okay, sorry. Um, so we actually just received a grant from the Lawrence Township Education Foundation where all of our rising ninth grade students will have a very special book to read this summer. So when they come in as freshmen, we have something that we can work with throughout all the classes and everybody will have the same frame of reference. So that's a really neat opportunity. Um, this month, some of you, if you are sports fans, you may be aware of March Madness. We do something special here at the high school called um, LHS Madness. And all year, the students have been competing uh, red versus white. The school's divided into two different teams based on their last names. And for those of you who have children that were at the middle school, you probably understand the concept of the com competition regarding the houses. The students are all divided up by house at the middle school, so it's something that we continue here at the high school. So it's a really neat opportunity for the kids to kind of show their school spirit and to compete against each other and against the other students in the building. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Katz. All right, so my name is Mr. Williams. I'm the assistant principal at Lawrence High School. Very often when you guys get a call from the assistant principal, it's probably not good, but oftentimes here at the high school, we do involve ourselves in all aspects of students' life, whether it's academic, social, emotional. Um, I work very, I will we be working very closely with Mrs. Katz throughout your students' first year and helping to support them and ease the transition from the middle school to the high school. It is a transition. It, it, it can be a tough time. Um, academically, um, you know, it's, it's a little more rigorous than the middle school. So I'm here to talk to you about some things that we have in place to ease those transitions, ease that transition from the middle school to the high school. Um, first, we have our freshman agenda. It happens in August. Um, the kids all pile in here. It's like the last week in August. Um, Second to last week in August, we will actually put out the date uh, fairly soon. Um, and the students come in, um, they're going to be asked to pre register. And th th that's pretty much a time for them to get oriented to the high school. Uh, we will show them their lockers, give them their schedules, um, 
uh, take them on a tour of the building. Um, they will meet the peer leaders, and the peer leaders will be holding or, or, or working with them in the freshman seminar. Um, our freshman, freshman seminar is a continuation of freshman agenda. In that freshman agenda, they're going to get groups. During the freshman seminar, those groups will meet once every other month. We pull the students out of PE class and we address some of the social emotional needs in that transition, easing that transition into high school. Um, and it's, they are led by our peer leaders. So there's students holding these group sessions and they talk about relevant things that are re uh, relevant items that are relevant to our ninth graders coming into our building. Um, another support we have is the Cardinal Nest. The Cardinal Nest happens at lunchtime. It's led by our National Honor Society students. Um, we have our faculty advisors oversee it. Um, it's ran out of our library conference room and we have tutors available for all subjects for students that get tutoring on A days. A day comes up once every five days in our rotation cycle um, and the students are allowed to eat and meet with, the peer, with their uh, tutors, the NHS tutors, to get help. So it's a time for students to get help during the school day um, and they will be matched with a tutor in an area where, they, where that tutor excels. Um, office hours. Office hours are kind of organized and ran out of the academy, Miss Katz. So the academy, they will be meeting and talking with the kids and kids that are struggling, kids that are doing well, and they will recommend students to come and stay after, to stay after school to meet with their specific teachers that they're having issues with. Um, Ms. Katz and I oftentimes will first work with the student and ha offer them the opportunity to come. And if we see that that's not being successful, we then reach out to the parents so that they're aware of the opportunity. And then from there, we, we try to rope them into coming and getting extra help and getting their grades up if, if it is something dealing with their grades. Um, Homework Center is also another resource that we offer, which is a, a little less structure. Um, it's in the library. Um, we have um, a humanities teacher and a math and science teacher available um, to offer help for students. Um, each, it, it's offered during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, and uh, the kids can sign up, get on the late bus. It's, it's, it's for an hour from three to four in the library. And at that point, the teachers are at the front. The students have to initiate the contact with the teachers. Oftentimes, students use that as a time to work or work and find for group work. Um, and then at that point, if they do need help, they approach the teachers. The teachers give them the help that they need and kind of move on to the next group. Um, destinations is a little bit more organized where it's, it's a more of a consistent group. Um, that happens Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday also. Tuesday being the longest time span where the kids are able to be here from three to five. And this is for kids that need maybe a, a little bit more oversight and organization. The teachers will kind of keep a closer eye on them and, 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 and just work with their regular teachers to make sure that they're getting assignments, things that they need to get done. So these are the resources that we have here to help support that transition from the middle school to the high school. Literacy. As Ms. Katz mentioned, um, over the past couple years, we've been focusing on literacy. Um, our school goal deals with literacy. Um, she did kind of let the cat out of the bag about the grant that we received, which we're happy about. We're, our focus at this point is to prove, in, improve students' writing. So, this year, actually the past two years, the focus was with freshmen, specifically um, a timed writing. And we did the timed writing in the fall in the English classes, and then actually the social studies classes, I'm sorry. And the post-timed writing will be done in social studies and science. Um, next year, we're actually moving it up, so it will also affect freshmen and sophomores. So we feel that preparing students, and if they can read and write, you know, they'll have an easier time being successful in high school. So that's our high school goal, and that's kind of what we will be working on over the next couple years. This, the, the next couple years. This is a goal that we're, we're really hunkering down and trying to get better in. We don't want to have just one goal and, and transition to a new goal the next year. So we're really kind of hunkering down and refining and seeing how we can get better and improve in literacy. All right. Ms. Fulmeyer? 
Another goal for Lawrence is for students to get involved. We have many clubs and activities along with sports for your students to get involved. Historically, students that get involved earn at least a GPA nearly one point higher than one's students that don't. So make sure you look through those pamphlets, find something for your students to get involved, encourage them to get involved um, before school, and also during the day there's different activities. You know, the pep rallies, there's uh, red and white, and different things like that. So make sure that we're encouraging the kids to be part of these activities and to make sure that they have a full high school experience. Up on the slide now is these are the state graduation requirements. So all that middle school, you know, you don't play as a class, you can go to the next grade level, it doesn't really work that way. If you're not a student that isn't that good at history, well guess what, you're gonna need history. So if you don't do it now, you're gonna have to do it later. So you need four years of English, one year of American history, one world, year of world history, one, three years of math, three years of science, one year world language. This is the state requirement though, one year world language. You need a half of year of financial literacy. And you'll hear more about this also. We're gonna go into the electives a little more in depth once we get to the supervisors. Also, you need one year of a visual performing art and also a career and techno um, technology course. Like I said, they're the state requirements for graduation in order to get a high school diploma. The colleges are different. If you go to a two-year, if you want to go to a county college, sometimes you only need that one year of Spanish or foreign language. If you plan on going to a four-year college, they may require two or more than that. So if your, student, your child has goals to go to a four-year college or if they want to go to a technical school, school, make sure that they're talking to their counselors initially about their goals so that this way they can plan appropriately for their life after college. It's recommended that students take at least seven credits per year. So that's one credit per course. So you want them to have a full load of courses to make sure that whatever their goals are in the future, that they're preparing themselves for that. Currently, about two weeks ago, this is the park state requirement for testing. So as of this year, students could take a lot of different courses and take a lot of different tests if they did not pass the park. And they would be able to take the SATs, acupuncture, different things like that, and meet the state requirement. Currently, for incoming freshmen, so for your class, that would be that they have to take and pass either the ELA, grade 10, or pass the PARC for Algebra 1. If they do not pass either of these tests, then they can sit for the portfolio process. So that's where they meet with the supervisor, set it up so that they, we can show the state that they've met certain criteria. If the students did not sit for the PARC test, for all of these areas, they cannot do that portfolio process. This is new from the state, we're waiting for more information on it, but that would be your three areas in ELA and in, um, in math. So that's your Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then the um, ELA, 9th grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade assessments. But like I said, this came out like last week, so we're waiting to hear more information. The park test, as I kind of just said, there's three session sections in both ELA and in math, and it happens in the spring. Next, I'm going to have Mrs. Tanisowicz talk about the math courses. Hi, thank you for all coming out tonight. And I know, see several of you taking notes. We post this online as well, so once you go home, you'll have access to the information as well. So I just want you to take this slide in because math is unlike some of the other subjects that you'll be introduced to tonight. Where they enter their mathematics course in the high school depends on what math class they're scheduled into at the middle school. So we have a variety of entry points for incoming freshman students. If your child is currently in math eight. That's the nationally normed math class that the Common Core and the New Jersey Student Learning Standards recognize as on target. Your children will come in in the Algebra One Advanced or taking Algebra One here at the high school. If your child is currently sitting in Algebra One at the middle school, they'll enter 
into geometry. Those are all the courses that we offer here at Lawrence High School and at each level for each course offering. This is a typical math sequence. There are things, this is a traditional pathway and many times I field questions of interest about moving along a math continuum at a faster rate than um, other courses. And we do have, there are criteria, but it is perfectly acceptable for students to enroll in Algebra 2 and Geometry concurrently in their schedules. Algebra 1 is needed to be applied in Geometry. So you cannot take Algebra 1 and Geometry, but you, will, you can take Algebra 2 and Geometry concurrently if you meet the recommendations that are in the, in the course offering booklet. So that's a possibility of a math sequence, and there are different combinations of that depending on a variety of other influencing factors. AP classes, we, let, me, let me also go back and say that all of our academic courses here in Lawrence are offered at a CP or a college prep level, honors or AP. AP stands for Advanced Placement. That is a college level course that is mandated by the college board, what we teach, how rigorous it is, and then students have the option of taking a test for potential college credit while in high school. And that accepting of those college credits is dependent upon the higher level institution. So we're gonna go on to science because I also supervise the area of science. And again, those are all of our course offering booklets, uh, offerings at the levels at which they are offered. And if they're designated as elective classes, elective classes do not fill graduation requirements. The courses that Lawrence High dictates students take are biology and chemistry. After that, your third year of science opens up. Environmental science, physics, physics honors, those are optionals, those are options for third year science classes. Again, we have AP classes here in the science field as well. Again, this is a possible progression of science classes. Freshmen come in with biology in 10th grade chemistry. Then as you can see, the third year opens up and the fourth year is an optional year for science. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Dillon. Thank you. All right, I'm so happy to see all of you tonight. The English sequence, as uh, Ms. Fillmeyer mentioned, is pretty straightforward. We have four years worth of English. So students should enroll freshman year in English one, I know it's complicated, or <laughs> English one honors. We do have an elective uh, open to students in ninth grade, which is open all four years, and that's public speaking one and two. So it's two separate half-year courses, but many students take it concurrently. But if your child is interested in public speaking, or if you would like your child to develop his or her public speaking skills, it's a great class to take, and it's available in their freshman year. We continue with academic support instruction in their freshman year. So if currently your child is enrolled in academic support at the middle school, they might be recommended to be enrolled in this class. And we really, as Mr. Williams mentioned early, earlier, want to support our students who might be struggling a little bit in the area of English as they come into the high school. As you move through, you'll notice in the, um, I guess that's mustard colored there, the college prep is English 1, English 2, English 3, 
And you have two choices as you get to senior year. We have English 4 and we have English 101, 102. That senior level course is available to all of our students. It's a course that we offer as a dual enrollment course with Mercer County Community College. If you choose to have your child enroll in this course, not only do they get credit for taking English 4, they earn six, that's right, six college credits before they graduate from high school, saving you a bit of money, especially if you plan to send your child to Mercer County College, Rutgers, the College of New Jersey, Montclair, any of the state colleges. So that might be something that you'd like to keep in mind as you plan for your, your child's college career. Um, the honors program follows the same. Um, if you elect to have your child junior year go into AP language and composition, they are expected to take the AP examination when they get there. And again, in 12th grade, we have the humanities course, and we have the AP literature and composition course as well. And as Ms. Panasowicz mentioned, they are dictated to us by the college board. So we do not take care of that curriculum. We use the college board's curriculum to instruct those classes. As far as electives, as I mentioned, we have public speaking one and two, which goes through all four years. As we get to 11th grade, we have a whole bunch of half-year electives open up. So if your child is interested in anything like contemporary Shakespeare, oh, come on. At least get some takers for that. Um, or poetry, we do have students, depending upon interest, um, in those classes. And they're, they're really interesting classes to have. I also supervise social studies. Um, you only need, as Ms. Fillmeyer mentioned, three years of social studies. The first year in the sequence is uh, Modern World Civilizations. That's our MWC uh, class. And like English, it runs in college prep and also in honors. We do not have an elective in the social studies department for freshman year. However, we do sophomore year. So if your child's interested in economics, we have two, cl uh, two classes that they may take in sophomore year. In 10th and 11th grade, we have the American Civilization courses. So we have AMCIV 1 and AMCIV 2. If your child is in the honors program, we're going to recommend that they take AP US History and that is in lieu of an AMCIV 2 class. 12th grade, there is no requirement at this time for your child to take a history course, but as you can see, we have a lot of AP electives and we have a lot of half-year electives down at the bottom. I also have world language, yes! As Ms. Katz mentioned, she's one of our teachers of Spanish. Currently, your children are enrolled in a world language at Lawrence Middle School. So they either have Spanish, French, or Mandarin Chinese. If you take a look at the bottom, that honors program, your children will go into French 2, Mandarin 2, or Spanish 2. And we do offer a Spanish for Heritage Speakers course as well, which does take the place of a Spanish 2 or 3 course, depending on your child's level of literacy in his or her uh, native language. Um, we also offer at the high school Latin and Italian. Now, if your child wishes to get to the AP sequence of Latin and Italian, I'm going to recommend that your child enroll, obviously, in Latin and Italian 1 in their freshman year, and as they move through, that they consult the teachers of those two courses so that we may prepare them for the AP test as well. There is only one year of a requirement for world language. However, colleges like to see two or more years in the same language. So if your child is interested in the language, have them continue on through, especially if they love their French class right now, tell them to go ahead into French too for next year because we want to work, work them on up to AP French in their senior year. Got one more slide, I promise. Ah, I have English as a second language as well. For our students who need English language instruction, um, we provide a couple classes during the day. We do have an in-class support person who works with them as well. Um, we have to enter, uh, enter them based on the state criteria and the state test, and they're also exited based on the state criteria and the state test. And now I'll pass it over to Mrs. Rosen. Thank you. Hi.
Hi, everybody. I'm Heidi Rosen. I'm the supervisor of special education and child study team. I only have, I have one lonely slide, and I went in the wrong direction. So special education here in the high school offers a full continuum of supports in all the content subjects. So as you saw, we have um, English, history, math, and science. So we will have special education services in all those subjects, as subjects both in what we call the mainstream, in the inclusion classroom, I'll have a special education teacher uh, in all, all the areas, as, and in some, in some cases, there may be an assistant depending on the class size. And in some classes, we will have a smaller group called the out-of-class replacement. And in those classes, there will be no more than nine students. And if we needed to slip over nine students in that small group, we would have an instructional assistant as well. As far as electives for study, we, for, I'm sorry, I'm a little out of breath, I'm a little under the weather. <coughs> for some students, we can elect to add an additional small class instruction in study skills, and that is by request. Your child study team case manager, parent, and teacher can elect to have an additional study skills resource class, but that would take pl the place of one of their choice electives. So as you saw that there are some electives, um, I think we get to electives a little later in the slide, um, but that would take the place of an elective. It is a credit-bearing class. It's not a study hall, and there will be an additional instruction in that class. Um, they do get to do some of their homework, but that would be a small class of no more than nine students. Those classes are aligned with the general education curriculum standards, aligned with the goals and objectives in their students, in your students' IEPs. If you have any questions, I'll be here at the end of the evening. They're usually very specific, and I will be here to answer those questions. I, I can take one right now. Um, what about language support? What about support for language classes? Does it have to take one year of language? So depending on the student's IEP, there could be additional support for foreign language. Um, some, students are, some students actually might be exempt from foreign language, but there is not a special education language course. Our next candidate is our physical education supervisor. Hi everyone, I am Allison Fisher. I am the Director of Health, Physical Education, and Athletics for the entire district. I am gonna be speaking to two parts. First, we're gonna start with physical, physical education and health. So, PE and health are actually the only courses mandated by the state for a certain amount of minutes um, out of all of the other classes. So. K through 12, our students are required to take a certain amount of minutes, 150 each week. How we do it at the high school is that students will have health or PE every day for the entire year. So one of their eight courses that they will choose is going to be health and PE. PE takes place three quarters of the year and health takes place one quarter of the year. There's four different health classes that are graduation requirements for the, our building. The freshman health is a combination of first aid, CPR, AED, and some other illnesses and diseases. Then sophomore year is the probably most important course here at the high school, driver's education. And that is because we are all on the roads with our future drivers, and therefore this class is important for all of our safety. So that it does take place their sophomore year. And then there is a junior and a senior health as well. Um, and so that is each quarter. Um, the, it changes every year. Driver's Ed, we always do in the beginning half of the year because we do have a lot of students taking their permits, uh, tests, and then wanting to become drivers. The driver's education sophomore year, they will take the state exam in our driver education course. That is the purpose of the entire course. 
Um, we are fortunate, not every district, it is not mandated that we offer that course. The only mandate is that we teach a few safety issues with driving, but we do feel that it is very important for all of us. Um, so we do offer that, and we do give the state exam, and we do actually offer retakes afterwards once as well. We actually just offered them a few weeks ago. We do have a pretty successful rate of passing um, in the last couple of years. It's continued to go up and up. Our teachers have been really focusing on the driver ed instruction. Also, um, something that we're going to be looking forward to in the future is because our students do take the CPR and AED um, course in freshman health, we are looking to get them certified as well. So we're going to be sending out more information hopefully next year. Um, they are going through the full first aid and CPR and AED instruction, so we would like them to get certified. And the other three marking periods worth of physical education, um, they get to choose. We have what we call selection. Um, it's a really neat thing where our students don't get told what units they're going to be doing. So they don't get told that all winter we're playing basketball and volleyball, and all fall we're going to play soccer and field hockey. Every three weeks, our students choose a new unit. Depending on how many teachers are in that rotation, anywhere from three to six, that's how many choices there are each unit. They range from badminton to pickleball to volleyball to volleyball to soccer. Now that we have the turf, we're definitely going to be outside more often because we don't have to worry about early morning dew, which was an, a common issue in previous years. So we're going to be offering other sports such as ultimate frisbee. We also require that our students take swimming. They, we do have a pool. It is here at the high school. Uh, they are required to take two units of swimming as a freshman. Um, we allow students to um, wear whatever they want in the pool, so that helps. Um, they can wear a bathing suit, they can wear capris, they can wear t-shirts, whatever they want, but they do have to take the two units of swimming as a freshman and as a sophomore. And then as a junior and senior, they have to take one unit of swimming. So those are factored in. We also require them to take a unit of what we consider wellness. We have a fitness room and a weight room here at the high school, and we are cre actually in the process of creating a new unit where it's gonna combine what we used to call weight room with some other fitness elements, and they're gonna be required to take that as well. Um, and that will teach them the basics of our fitness room and our weight room so that when they graduate, they can go into any gym, they can go into any park and create their own fitness plan so that they can use the equipment and know how to monitor and track their own fitness, which we think is an important life skill. So that is the PE side of things. Again, every year that a student is enrolled in high school, they have to be enrolled in PE, and they do take it every day. So that's part of my job. The other part is that I am the athletic director. Um, I hope that you saw on the table there is two things related to athletics. The first is a small pamphlet. This highlights our athletic programs. It lists all of the programs that we offer here at Lawrence High School. It gives you some contact information so that if you're interested in learning a little bit more about our programs, they're in here. Um, and just gives you some fun facts about the benefits of being a participant in our Cardinal Athletic Program. I also included this, which we will get to. So we are very fortunate. We offer uh, 22 different sports here at Lawrence High School. And we offer at least one sport each season that doesn't have a cut policy. Unfortunately, some of our sports are, uh, they do have to cut because of resources, coaches, and so on. But at least one sport each season is a no-cut sport. We do encourage anyone to try something new in high school. It, there are plenty of people that have gone out for cross country, tennis, field hockey, lacrosse for the first time, and have been very successful in their high school careers. There's a lot of research that says that the more tied our students are to a school, the more successful they are. Also, athletics helps academics. We, consider, we call them student athletes. Student comes first for a reason. And what we actually see in our studies is that during our athletes' season, so if I was a field hockey player during my field hockey season, my grades are actually higher than when I am not playing that sport. The reason is because our coaches all take academics very seriously. They monitor grades. You will see when your son or daughter 
is involved in a sport, it's actually on their schedule. So you'll see their eight periods of classes and you'll see whatever sport they're in. The coach is the teacher. And the coach has access to all of the grades, all of the attendance. They can see when they're late to classes. And that really helps because a lot of athletes don't want to sit. And the coaches have very strict policies. If there are sinking grades, then there isn't as much playing time. And that accountability really helps our athletes. We also offer a variety of different support options for our athletes. We offer academic study halls that are for athletics. As we know, athletics take place um, after school. They often eat up a lot of time, and time management is an important skill that often has to be taught. So our study hall helps to teach organizational skills. They ha we have a math and an English teacher in there. They actually can provide academic support as well. And sometimes students just need somewhere to study and some help on editing an essay. So we offer that athletic study hall as well to help with the academic side of things. So, and that's one of the reasons why our student athletes have higher grades during their season than when they're not in season. So for those that are athletes or considering trying a new sport, um, everyone is automatically eligible when they enter high school. So we don't have to worry about anything. It's a clean slate, which is a really nice thing. It gives our students really a time to learn the athletic program, get used to the culture here. However, that doesn't last. As of the spring season, our student athletes have to attain 6.75 credits every semester to be eligible to play sports. So what I do is actually spring sports started last Friday for the high school. So the next over the next week, I'll be going into every student athlete's grades and checking to make sure they have enough credits from the previous semester. And if they don't have 6.75 credits, they are not allowed to play in any competitive games for the entire season. So that helps with that accountability piece, but it is an important thing to remember. Again, they come in with a clean slate, but as soon as the spring season starts, if they're freshman year, then we do have this credit requirement. And it is an important thing to keep in mind, because we have unfortunately had to sit some students that were academically ineligible. We also, it's important to know that we do have to have a physical on file every year. And this is very, and if you have an athlete in the middle school already, you kind of know this process. It, our school doctor is actually the person authorizing the physical. So you have two options. We offer four free physicals each year, one per season and one in the summer. So the next one coming up will be at the end of the school year. It'll be a Tuesday in June usually one of the last Tuesdays that of school. And we offer those for free. And we encourage you to use that option because our school doctor is the one doing it, those physicals. And you can go to your home doctor as well. But our school doctor still has to sign your physical. So often what happens is that your home, your home doctor will fill out a physical form and then you'll turn it in two days before the season. And then it takes two weeks for our doctor to sign it because our doctor only works when we ask her to on, and she only can work one on Tuesdays and on only selected Tuesdays. So it is something that you really need to keep in mind. Also, our, I know my insurance and many other insurances only allow physicals every 365 days exactly, and that it often causes an issue with depending on when that physical expires. So that's why it's another benefit of just using our school doctor and our school physical. But you do have those options, and they're always on the athletics website. Also, we have a new online registration process, and that's the second step in making sure that your student athlete is registered for whatever sport they're interested in playing. And those dates for registrations are always posted on the website under athletic physicals. Also, um, the other important thing that I'm going to not go into great detail on, but you can always come and ask me more questions, is NCAA. So if you have an athlete that is a potential college athlete, even if you have no idea, right, as an eighth grader, there's so much growth that happens in our students from freshman year until senior year. It's really hard to tell who's going to be a college-bound athlete or not. So we're all going to pretend if they play a sport that they're going to be a college-bound athlete because you want to be prepared in case. And there's requirements for athletics in Division I and Division II schools that have gotten way more stringent in the last few years. 
Um, this year started the new, this graduating class has new requirements for Division I, and next year we'll start new requirements for Division II. And basically what it does is it does not count a lot of our electives and our PE classes in what they consider a core GPA. The core GPA is only going to count math, classes, English classes, social studies, science, world language, and selected history, math, science, and social studies electives. And that's it. No art, no business, no theater, no PE in that core GPA. And that core GPA needs to be a two, three, or higher to play at a college level in a Division I or Division II school. So on that folder that I have up in the front, there is a cheat sheet for, it gives you just quick facts about the NCAA recruiting process in the inside of the folder. It also gives something on the side that's called the sliding scale. The sliding scale is what your GPA needs to be aligned with your SAT score or ACT score to be able to play a Division I school. A similar sliding scale will be enacted for next year as well, for Division II. So this just gives you an idea of what grades need to happen in school and what test scores need to happen for students to be eligible to play a sport. Again, this is like the very quick version. There's entire books written on this. There's like two-day seminars on this. Um, but I'm a great resource, and I have other great coaches and resources available to help you with more detail as your students come into high school and take their courses and play their sports. Um, if you have questions, please see me afterward about any of those things, and we look forward to having all of our uh, future Cardinals come and join our athletic programs, especially we have a very exciting year ahead because we are opening our second turf field. We have now a turf field with lights. So your students are really coming in at a time where the Cardinal pride is um, increasing, and our students are really excited to be here. So we're excited to welcome all of you here. And we are going to move on to Mr. Dr. Barry Exa for all the other departments that haven't been discussed. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, good evening, everybody. I am Damian Barry Exa, and I am the supervisor of everything else in the district. <laughs> Uh, now, I have the, uh, for the last three years, I've had the honor and the privilege of supervising the fine arts, the practical arts, the performing arts uh, in, in, in the district, uh, K-12, to also the library program. So I'm going to speak briefly about some of the elective courses we offer here at the high school. Uh, I've limited my slides. Uh, in, the, in the courses, you'll see lists of the slides here. I've limited the, slide, the uh, courses to only those available to freshmen. We do have other courses listed in your, in your course of study booklet, uh, but uh, some of them start at grade 10 and some of them start at grade 11. But for right now, we'll just focus on the ones for, uh, that your, student, your, your children might take next year. Um, and I, I need your help with something. Uh, sometimes the word elective gets kind of a, a, a bad rap. Um, and by that, I, and I saw this as a, a former child study team member myself, I uh, worked at a high school in a different district, um, sometimes f students equate the word elective with, I can elect whether or not I pass this class. <laughs> and not exactly what the intention of the word elective is in this situation. Uh, yes, these are courses are electives in that you can choose which one you would like to take. Then there are lots of options, as you will see. However, um, they are not optional to pass to graduate. There is still a requirement that you pass a, that you take a fine arts class, a, a credit of fine arts, to graduate. There is the 21st century skills. You must take it to graduate. You have six and a half credits worth of electives you must take to graduate. Now, you have, again, you have a lot of choice. You can elect which courses you take. So I, uh, if you would, please help reinforce that with your sons and daughters, that these courses are interesting, they're fun, but they're also critical in that we, we, you know, we, we take them seriously and we, we, we invest, uh, invest our, our, uh, our resources in them as well. So in the business and technology uh, uh, areas, we have a computer applications course, uh, we have international business, sports marketing one and two, all open to freshmen, and I'm very excited this year. Uh, we are offering intro to computer science in two different flavors uh, next year. Uh, one in a uh, half-year course in JavaScript and a half-year course in Python. These will both be offered out of the business department. Um, if your children are interested in learning coding and programming, they can take these courses as freshmen if they have room in their schedules. They can also take robotics and programming, uh, which the, the primary language taught there is Robot C. Mr. Rush teaches that course out of our technology department. 
and these are great. These courses are great preparation for if your when your children get older, if they'd like to take um, AP Computer Science A out of the math department. These are all great training grounds for that. Uh, we also have a course in Inventions and Innovations and Introduction Introduction to Drafting in AutoCAD, and we made some changes to our um, our how our courses are offered to freshmen versus non-freshmen this year. For the first time next year, the Introduction to Photography and Introduction to Videography courses will be available to freshmen. So if your children have an interest or a passion in photography and really learning uh, not just the, the technical piece about using the camera and how to adjust the settings, you know, it's not like just taking an iPhone and taking the quick selfies. Um, if they're interested in learning the technology behind it and also the art of photography and the aesthetics of photography, that would be a wonderful class for them to take. And the same goes for the introduction to videography courses. And as they get a little older, we, all, we, have, we have courses in advanced photography and uh, we have a functional TV studio uh, in, in the building that once they're sophomores, they can take, those, take that course. And I'm working with our current teacher, Ms. Cutsup, to, for, to come up with some even cooler things to go even deeper into the study of uh, videography as we, get a little, as we get a little older. Okay, family and consumer sciences. When you and I were in high school, this might have been called home ec. It's 2017, it's not home ec anymore. Family and consumer sciences encompasses a wide range of skills, uh, but the ones primarily available to freshmen at Lawrence High School involve fashion design, interior design, and clothing, fabric, and construction. There's a nice mix in those courses between looking at, again, the, the uh, physical construction of fabrics and sewing, and also the business applications. Culinary 1 and Culinary 2 are two of the most popular courses we offer. Uh, we uh, regularly get more students signing up for these courses than we are able to accommodate, unfortunately. But it's great because your kids are going to be freshmen next year. They've got four years. If for whatever reason they don't get it next year, they've got three additional years they can sign up for, to take culinary one and two. Uh, those courses are food labs. We, they do food prep regularly. Uh, nutrition for healthy living. Uh, that course uh, is, there's still food prep involved in that course. Not quite as much. It's a little more focused on the, the, the biology and the science and the chemistry of, uh, of food and the nutrition aspect. Fine and Performing Arts, we have a few courses. Uh, last year we started our introductory guitar and piano courses with great success and we're looking forward to making some tweaks and making them even better for next year. Uh, Ms. Kehoe and, and Ms. Johnson run those courses, so the emphasis is on theory and composition and if your weapon of choice is the guitar or your weapon of choice is the piano, you can take either one and learn about Again, not just how to play, the mechanics of how to play. And, and we do have students in, these, in, this course, uh, in these courses this year who know how to play. They've been playing piano for a while. They've been playing guitar. They taught, they're self-taught, much like I was on guitar. But they have expressed an interest in learning the theory, learning, um, learning about how, how to compose the principles behind, uh, behind it, the method to the madness, as it were. Uh, we have a half-year course called Music and the Human Experience, which almost is, uh, operates like a history of music course. Uh, and then, of course, we have our performance ensembles, your string orchestra, concert band, wind ensemble, percussion ensemble, and we have our concert choir, ensemble, and madrigal. Uh, theater One and Stagecraft and Design are, are our two theater courses that are available to, uh, to freshmen. We also have theater, to, uh, theater Two and Advanced Theater Studies and Musical Theater that are uh, available to older students. But if, you're, if your kids have an interest in the stage, th these are wonderful, both with an emphasis on what happens on stage and an emphasis on what happens backstage. And if anyone here is, a, is an actor or a former actor like I am, we, we know that what happens behind stage is just as important as what happens on, in front of the stage or on the stage. Uh, in our visual arts uh, categories, we have uh, commercial art which is a more computer-based art program, uh, art class. We have pottery and sculpture, painting and drawing, and these classes run up through, um, uh, through uh, you know, drawing one, drawing two, painting one, painting two. Uh, what, what we often see is students who really have a, an interest in these, uh, in these uh, mediums, in these media, sorry, uh, former English teacher, uh, who the students who have an interest in these media uh, will often request to take independent studies with the teachers as they get older. So even though there may not be a pottery and sculpture three class, there may be only two students interested in pottery and sculpture three, rather than not run the class, 
those students will be kind of incorporated into a Pottery II course, but given a little more of an independent study program to follow, and that the students arrange that with the teachers when the time comes. Generally speaking, most of the electives are worth one credit. It's listed in your, in your uh, course of study which courses are one credit or full year courses and which courses are half credit or half year courses. I'll move out of the way here. It's a good idea for your students to pick some alternates. Uh, they're they're going to be meeting with their guidance counselors very soon if they haven't already. And it's a great idea to have a couple of kind of substitutes prepared. So when you go home, when you speak with them about what they're going to be taking as freshmen, it's great that they're interested in Theater One, for example. It's the first course I thought of. Theater One, if for some reason Theater One gets locked out or it's full, we can't run any more sections, have them pick something else they'd like to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be another theater class. It could be, okay, well, I didn't get into Theater One. Maybe I'll take, um, you know, guitar or whatever, whatever you might do. Uh, one credit electives should have one credit alternates. Half credit electives should have half credit alternates. Have a, have a bench. And, and the, the, the nice thing about doing this exercise and having a couple extra is it gets your sons and daughters involved in reading the course of study and thinking, oh, this is pretty cool. I'd like to take this. And if they can't take it as a freshman, it's fresh in their mind. They can take it as sophomores. And it might be a discussion to have around this time next year with them to see, oh, well, is there anything you didn't get to take as a freshman? OK, maybe we can take it this year. All right, and I'm going to kick it back to Mr. Williams to talk. Yeah. I'm going to, Mr. Williams has answered that. He's the power school guru. Well, I just sat up here and, and I was just listening to Damien's presentation, and I don't know if you picked up on it, but the guy does everything. He said he acts, plays the guitar, he's an English teacher, he's a former case manager. I'm just sitting here like, wow, left brain and right brain all working together. Um, so I am the person responsible for taking 120 teacher schedules, generating those, and 1,200 student schedules generating those and scheduling them into rooms in the building. And there's not enough room, there's not enough rooms for each teacher to have their own room. But most teachers, Ms. Katz, only want to be in one, maybe two rooms. So that is my summer. On top of, <laughs> um, we want to make people happy, right? We, we want to give the kids their first choice. And we take our schedule and we tear it apart each year. Um, there are elements of our schedule that stay the same, but we start from ground zero each year. And the reason behind that is we want our schedule to be driven by your students' requests. And I know I sound like a salesman, but that is kind of what we do. Now, to be honest, there are some of you in here and, and, and it, it won't be happy. You will not get the elective your first choice. Now. The computer, that, the system that we're, we, we use to schedule um, prioritizes. So seniors have the top priority. Juniors have the, the rising seniors have the top priority. Rising juniors have the next level of priority. Sophomores and then freshmen. The reason we do it that way is the seniors will have no more opportunities to take these courses in the building. The freshmen will have three more years to get those courses. I know it seems unfair, but we do prioritize. So we do ask that you do choose alternates. When you go into the class registration screen, I really want you to focus on two areas. One, the electives. Two, the world language. All right, and, and not in that order. Ms. Katz is going to yell at me at this. One, world language. <laughs> <laughs> then your world language alternate, and then your electives, and then the alternates for those electives. And I say that because oftentimes, and I will use culinary as the example, we have one kitchen, one kitchen, and that we can schedule for eight periods. And oftentimes, I can only fit about 15 students in that kitchen. So that fills up rather quickly, and oftentimes, like I said, the freshman tend to get bumped out of that course, and it's not an automatic something that happens. We try to look at the student's requests, we try to look at the student's schedule, and then we try to, like I said, build the best schedule for your student. But if your kid gets bumped out as a freshman, they will have that opportunity to take it again as a sophomore. 
And now their priority as a sophomore has elevated. So now they will have the ability to bump out a freshman and the freshman, and they, they will have priority over that freshman. And this is how it happens on college campuses. This is, this is something, and very rarely does it happen. It does happen, like I said, with our, um, our, our cooking courses, our, our, our culinary courses, um, most often. Um, give me one second, let me just power through this real quick. Um, so this is the power school screen that you're gonna actually pull up. And if you see on your uh, left-hand side, you have class registration, you're gonna select class registration. And like I said before, you're gonna wanna focus on your uh, world language and your, your electives and, and the alternates to those courses. Now, as you see, English, you won't be taking driver's ed, you'll be taking health, social studies, math, science. Those courses are pretty much generated off of teacher recommendations. Um, at this point, the majority of teacher recommendations are in, but teachers actually have until the 28th to actually change those recommendations, April 28th. So those recommendations may not be entirely accurate, okay, because they may not have had enough time and the teacher may be holding off to see if the student's performing up to the ability to be in that honors course, okay? So that's why the focus here should be, like I said, the electives in the world language courses, all right? Um, in the current ninth grade, how many how many ninth graders are taking all four honors classes? So, if you have a child that is recommended for all four, do do they typically accept all four? Is four too much workload? That's what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of buzz going around about that now. We're okay, so if there are, and that's really a com it's, it's really tough for me to answer that question. How it's really how many ninth graders have all. I don't know the number right offhand, but all four, yeah, you have students that have four honors courses, yes. But it's really dependent on the student, the recommendation, and then the conversation between the parent and the student, and the parent and the student and the counselor. Okay? So I can't give you a, 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 an accurate question, an accurate answer to that question, but we try to do what works best for your student. And oftentimes, like I said, you know, that can be changed up until June 3rd. Um, so that's, that's something that if you want to come up to me, I can kind of, we can talk about that privately. Okay, um, so once you're in there, you see that pencil, you're gonna click that pencil and the courses will come up and you will be able to select the courses um, that the kids would be able to load into their schedule. So we encourage you to have those conversations, have that course of study, um, I try to limit the courses that come up with the electives for, for only course, courses that freshmen can take, okay? I tried to, I really tried to limit it, but there may be some other courses up there that freshmen can't take and there are reasons that they are there, but you know, have those conversations with your kid. Um, Mrs. Malofsky, she was here, and she told me she actually sent out all the students an email, and she will actually be posting it to her Facebook page also, um, it has, the registration guidelines, so it takes you step by step by step through the process. Um, it has a cheat sheet of all the recommendations. I'm mean, not recommendations, I'm sorry, all the, all the courses or elective courses that the freshmen will take. Um, and she also has almost an activity sheet, which you can actually fill out the sheet prior to going onto the computer and selecting it. So you, it, 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 it's good to have be the centerpiece of that conversation before you get onto the computer. Okay. You had mentioned, as well as um, some of the kids, that they should have the, the world language in a backup. Mm -hmm. So if your child in eighth grade right now, which many of them are, um, have taken the first year of Spanish or French, um, you want them in the second level for next year, why would we want to have a backup if that's going to completely put them off target for the next three years? Okay, now like I said, that's a, that's a very specific question. Um, you would still wanna put in a backup just in case for some reason they can't get into that course, but oftentimes those second year level courses have a little bit more room than the first year level um, world language courses. Um, 
we have two world languages that where we only have two teachers, uh, well, actually one teacher per department. You have our Chinese, okay, and you have Latin and Italian, so there's three. So we do have a limit on students that we're able to take in those courses. But the level twos generally don't fit that category. There's usually space in the level two. So if your child is recommended for a level two, that's not something you really have to worry about. But like I said, if that is a question, that's something, that's a question that you can talk to your, your child's counselor about, your individual counselor. Okay? So I'm just going to try to power through. So counselors will meet with the students. Um, they actually have already met with the, they already met with the students collectively and kind of went over a, a kid sanitized version of this presentation. And there now they will start to meet with the students on the week of March 13th individually. So they'll be going over to the school to actually meet with the students. The portal will be opening up tonight, okay? As soon as you leave here, I'm gonna actually open up the portal and you guys will be able to get in tonight and start to look at some of those offerings. Um, course requests, once those course requests are in the computer, um, Towards the end of the spring, I, I, would, I, I feel around, I would say about May, we send the course requests home so you can verify those course requests. And then June 3rd, we ask that at, after that point, no, no more changes are going to be accepted for those course requests. So you, they, get really, they get locked in June 3rd so we can generate a good schedule for your student. So if we have, have, we, if we have continual changing of electives, it kind of messes up generating a schedule for the masses. So by June 3rd, actually it's June 2nd, June 3rd is a Saturday, but by June 2nd, end of school business day, that's the last day that we're gonna accept changes when it comes to course requests. Can you explain what DECA is? As far as the Um, okay. All right. We, we will discuss DECA. If you want to come up, I, I will discuss DECA with you separately. Um, it, it is, it's a club we have here, and we have courses that the students participate in. Like I said, but that's a very general question. You can come up at the end, and we can discuss that later. Um, we try to generally have – students will have schedules the first day. We try to open up the portal prior to the first day of school. Um, and we do give students their schedules at freshman orientation. So your students will be getting their schedules prior to the first day of school. We try to have your students, the freshman students, have them at freshman orientation so they can actually see which classes they're actually going to. Okay? Quick question. So if the, if the kids are meeting with the counselors next week, the portal opens up tonight, when are we actually supposed to, are we supposed to wait for them to meet with their counselors before we should go on? Okay. That's a great question. So the portal does open up tonight. So you will have tonight up until March 13th to get in and schedule with your students, right? At that point, I shut down the student portal. Why do I do that? Because I don't want students to get in or parents to get in and change the courses after the counselor has met with the student, okay? At, after I shut down the portal on the 13th, you will be able to communicate with the, your child's counselor for changes. And we're going to be putting up the counselor breakdown at the end of this session, which we will also post online. So how can we change the classes if we don't know what the recommendations are from the? That's why you're only focusing on electives. Okay, you're not focusing on core courses. Those core courses will be driven by those teacher recommendations, some of which are in, okay? And that's why I will be sending out, in May, I will send out your fine, all, pretty much your final course requests, and you'll see you know, what your kid has, which requests your kids are lined up for for their core courses. So that's why it's really important for you to focus on the electives and not the core courses. Okay, I'm going to take a few more questions and then. We'll... So I assume it'll be obvious in Power School, but how many electives are we choosing? It depends. It depends if you're choosing half credit courses or full credit courses. Okay, but 
or a mix. If it's full, if it's full credit course, it's, it's one plus worldwide? Yes. Well, it, 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 yeah. It, it really depends on the breakdown. You'll see it. Okay, but it'll, it'll add? It'll, it'll tally it at the bottom. Okay. Just to add, just to add, so like with the core courses, mm -hmm. how many credits do they take up and then you have to fill in the seven or eight? Yes, it'll be, if you look, at the bottom of the screen, it tallies and it won't let you go over a certain amount. Yep, and, and the core courses at that point, you don't have to choose the core courses. You can actually submit without choosing the core courses. It'll allow you to submit. It won't make you choose your core courses. And just a question on the seven versus eight, like, how is eight credit for these windows? Like, when do you take? Where does that fit in the day? Okay, we have eight periods in the day. Therefore, you have the possibility to take eight credits. The lunch is built into fifth period or sixth period. How many it really depends on the child's schedule. Come see me and I'll, I'll explain that to you. All right, I'm just gonna. Okay. Yes, it's gonna say elective one, elective two, and then elective three, and then at the bottom, it'll have alternate. Yeah, and it's going to be alternate is the word you're looking for, and you want to make sure you, for each elective, you have an alternate for that elective. Okay? All right. Back to Ms. Philmeyer. Okay, so I may be a little biased, but I think that the school counselor is definitely the key component with scheduling with your, with your child. The main part is because when they're pulling up all the information from your students' historical classes and their grades, they're gonna know what classes they're really prepared to take and they've really been working with the program of studies. We can all stand up here and tell you these are the courses, however, every student's different. Every student has different goals. So you wanna make sure that you talk closely with the counselor to look at where your students should really be placed at because the goal is for them to be successful in whatever level that may be. So working with the counselor is really important. Next week, they will be meeting with all of your children to schedule. They've been given um, sheets for the electives and it actually has it on there. You can write it on there and even put the alternates so that this way when they're going to that meeting, if you get confused with power school or anything like that, it's right there. The counselor will understand it. You can give them a call and go through it that way. Make sure that they come prepared with any questions. You can even reach out to the counselor afterwards. I'm gonna give you the breakdown so that you can call them if you have questions regarding your individual student. Um, this way you can kind of say, okay, well, why aren't they prepared for that? Or why should they maybe take, should I push them in this area? And you know, the one question earlier about should my student take four honors level courses? One student, that may be appropriate to take four honors level courses, but for another student might say, okay, my strong area is math. So I'm gonna take you know, honors level in math and then maybe a little lower level in English. And the counselor is able to look at that whole schedule and see the bigger picture and really see what your student is prepared for. This is the counselor breakdown. So if anyone wants to write that down, we have Mrs. Welsh, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. D'Angelo, and Mrs. Corbin. And they did, they met with them on Monday and gave a presentation so they should at least have an idea of what they look like and who they are, so that this way when they see them next week, they're not too surprised. Like we said earlier, if anyone wants to stay after and ask any questions, we'll be here. And feel free to reach out to your counselors and ask um, individual questions regarding their historical grades or what you think. You know, Any questions that you may have, they can either answer for you or try to find that for you. And thank you very much.